Tripods are one of the most common accessories for photographers, and I would say that they're nearly essential. I own three different tripods, well, three different camera tripods. I have lighting stands and this sort of thing as well. I own these three main tripods and I use them for different reasons. This is my main go-to tripod, this is for travel, and this is when I'm traveling extra light or I want to mount it onto something more difficult. I want to walk you through the different tripods and how they work so that you don't make the same mistakes I made when I first bought my tripods. The first thing you'll notice is there is a rubber grip handle. It's just in case it gets cold and you're walking around without gloves, you can hold the rubber grip rather than the cold aluminium legs. The second thing, and this is what separates a good tripod from a bad tripod, or at least this is, when you start getting past the really cheap and ugly tripods into a half decent tripod, you'll find that you have independently moving legs. So these can all be moved separately. And not only can they be moved separately, they can be moved to different degrees. So if I push this button at the top here, I can push these tripod legs out further and further so that I believe it might even have one more. Yep, so it can go pretty much entirely flat out. This is good because it helps you to get in a ton of different situations. Personally, I will usually build my tripod up to around my height because I'm quite... I'm quite tall. And then depending on what I'm standing on, oftentimes if the surface is uneven or I'm standing on a hill and it's sloping down slightly, I will take my tripod like that and I will take one leg, I'll push the top in, and I'll just move it to wherever I need so it stands upright. So if there's a slope coming down, that can go on it, like so if I need to. Of course, I can also adjust this height section of the tripod, so I can lift this up here and adjust that however I like. A popular feature to look for on a tripod is a bubble level. It'll tell you whether your tripod's flat or not. I don't think I've ever looked at this because the important part is whether the ball head is flat and not that section there, at least not for what I do. Uh, that's because of the head I use. Something to look for here is you'll also see two different hooks. So this is a hook here and also a hook here. So this hook will allow you to add weight to the tripod. If you're using a lightweight tripod or if you're in a strong breeze, strong wind, sometimes uh, if you get a carbon fiber tripod, they are very light and strong but not the most stable because they're so light. You can add a weight hook to this. Some people attach their camera bag and they just tie it down and hang it off the bottom here, or you can use sandbags. Uh, this hook here isn't meant to carry that kind of load bearing weight. This is, for a camera, this is for a strap to attach to the tripod, so you can put, put it around the legs and on that strap hook too. A feature that I didn't realize was on my tripod for about a year is this here. So I'm going to loosen this, push this all the way up, and there's a little button at the very bottom, and if I press that in, it's going to allow me to put it all the way to the top there. And then I can go sideways, tighten it, and it's going to lock into position, and then I can have it horizontal rather than vertical. So that's the tripod legs. One thing that is worth mentioning here is that when you buy professional tripods like this, I think this costs around three, three hundred fifty dollars. A fantastic investment. I've really made a lot of use out of this. Something that's worth remembering is that you will often buy the legs and the head separately. So this section here is where it starts to get, start to buy it separate. And the reason for that is because people have different preferences. So some people prefer a ball head, which I'll show you on my next tripod. I like to have a joystick head because it's so easy to adjust. You know, it stays sturdy in one place, but if I want to change it slightly, I just squeeze and I can move it like so. I like a ball head. Um, it does have, or it's supposed to have a bubble level in here, but I've had this for about five years now and it's, it's gone missing. I never used it anyway. I use my eye, or if I really need help, I'll look at the auto level on my camera as well. Let's talk about the different types of heads. 
So as I mentioned, this is a joystick head. You can get panorama heads, you can get ball heads. It really comes down to personal preference. As I mentioned, I like the joystick head, but something else that goes along with the head is the type of plate that is provided. So I use Manfrotto tripods and it uses a Manfrotto tripod plate. It's a very common tripod, but not every tripod uses the same system. There is actually quite a few different versions of plates that you can buy for your tripods. So remember that when you do invest in a tripod, you're investing into a system. It's like buying Canon versus Nikon. You can only put a certain set of lenses onto your camera. I like Manfrotto, I'm happy with this. Other people prefer tripod heads that you can just slide into place. I don't, I don't, I don't personally have a problem with this. This basically slips in there. And then once this is open, I can press down and it will lock the tripod in place. So let's mount this onto the camera. The way this plate works is underneath you'll see two different lens icons and the lens will point in a certain direction. So I can place the tripod to my standard go-to position is to go long ways along the, tri along the camera and I'll put the, the camera in like that. I'm just gonna put this tripod back together again. And that looks, that's good, but if you notice the joystick head, it limits my movement because of this handle. That's not an issue though, because of how this tripod plate works. What I can do is I can take it off, loosen it slightly, and I can just rotate it by 90 degrees into the other position. And I can turn the head like so. And now I can look as far off as I'd like. So that's how that tripod head works. One final thing to mention about your tripod head is you need to work out the weight of your camera and ensure that the tripod head will support it. So this was the strongest joystick head they had at the time because I knew I was gonna put a full frame body and a 24 to 70 on it. And to be able to hold that weight without it slipping like this, you need to make sure you have a very strong tripod head. So if you're using big and heavy gear, ensure that you have the correct head for it. This is my main tripod for photography, but it's large. I don't really take it traveling. It barely fits in my suitcase. It has to go in at an angle. Instead, what I like to use is this little Manfrotto tripod. The great thing about this tripod is how small it packs up. Even if I push this down, you can see it packs up even smaller. It doesn't have all of, all of the bells and whistles that this tripod has, but it's still pretty decent. So let's show you how this works. These tripod legs flip all the way out. And on here, there are three different positions that I can set it to. So in that first position, the leg will move freely. In the second position, it will lock at a regular distance. And the third position is a little bit further out. I like the regular second position myself for most of my photography. So I'm gonna set them all to that. And it's not as tall as that one, so I have to duck down a little bit to view it. But it does a pretty decent job. I mean, you can't expect too much from a tripod that's that small. And it really, I think it cost me about $100. It wasn't a lot of money. So that's the tripod set up in its main position. And you can adjust the height of this too. You'll notice one of the things it's missing is a weight hook. Although I don't think I've ever used a weight hook on this tripod. I would maybe need one on this because it's a lot lighter, but I still haven't used it. I've used this tripod for Milky Way photography. I've used it a lot and I've never had a problem with it, if I'm entirely honest. I do prefer this because it's easy to use and I feel like it's sturdier and I can worry less about knocking it or I can worry less about a strong wind that might shake the camera over a long exposure. But this still does a really good job. And it uses the same plate system that the, the other Manfrotto uses. It's got a ball head here. This is a pretty universal head, free movement. I can push it up and down wherever I want it to go and I can tighten it like so. It's a good little tripod and it's great if you're going to travel. The third and final tripod I wanna show you is a Gorillapod. 
I bought this for a trip to Indonesia, and I, the, all I bought from, for photography-wise, we were doing backpacks, we were hiking, we had to keep our weight down to I think like less than 15 kilos, probably, probably less than, I think it was about 12 kilos. So I had this camera and this lens, that's all I brought, and I brought this tripod. The great thing about this tripod is, look at how the legs move. I can move them any way I like. And that meant that I could wrap this around the handle of my bag and I didn't need to find space for it inside my bag. Again, it's got a ball head. It's oh, the wrong one. There we go, it's just a little bit sticky after not being used for a few months. It's got a ball head. And I can also adjust the angle on a horizontal plane too, if I loosen this and move it around. It does have a different plate system, but it's a different camera band, so that's to be expected. But the real selling feature for this tripod is its versatility. Look at this. Now, I would probably tighten this, let me tighten it a little bit further. This is their professional level Gorilla Pod. It can carry a lot more weight. It will carry that camera, no problem. If we have a look at this. I would set this tripod up. I did, I did some Milky Way photography with this tripod, would you believe it, um, out with the tribe we were staying with in Indonesia. That's solid, that's sturdy on there now. And let's put the, the plate on. That will stay in the position I wanted to. I, I did, as I mentioned, I went for the extra strong version, so it has got that little bit more strength in the legs and it'll wrap around things. But I would put this on a tree. I would put it on a wooden post. I, I would put it on pretty much anything, as well as just its legs on the ground. When I did the Milky Way photography, I didn't attach it to anything. I just took the legs and I put them out as a tripod and I put them on the ground. And it came out great. See, I can knock that. It's not going anywhere unless I want it to. So we can move that around there. I can loosen that. And that, as a gorilla pod, is fantastic. So much versatility. It doesn't have, again, all the bells and whistles of this one. It, don't, it won't be as sturdy as this one either, but it is tiny and in a pinch, it'll do exactly what you need it to do. To do. So do you need all three tripods? Probably not. If I had to pick one, I'd always go for this because I use this more than anything else if I'm not traveling. If I am traveling, well, if I'm traveling, I do consider, okay, what am I going to capture? If I'm going to just take photos of friends and uh, places I go and things I see, then maybe I don't even need a tripod. If I'm not going to shoot any night photography or low light photography or Milky Way photography, something I do a lot of, I'll check the stars and the moon before I leave. And if there's no chance of seeing the Milky Way or I'm in a light polluted area, maybe I don't even bring a tripod. What I'm saying is, how often are you going to use your tripod? If you think it's going to be a lot, if you really rely on one for Milky Way photography, or let's say you just love landscape photography and you like to set up your composition and capture a scene as the light changes, then maybe you do want a little travel tripod. But I personally feel like, although this is my latest tripod, and I bought this you know, three, four months ago, I wonder what I did without it, because it's so easy to use, it's so lightweight, you can you, you can just attach it to the outside of your backpack. It doesn't take any of your luggage allowance when you travel. I personally think it's really good. So that's my three tripods. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment.